Hello and welcome back to Matt Ryan Photo. So, in the past, I have mostly done cameras, well, cameras and film cameras. Um, I haven't really touched on anything else. It's really been just cameras. And today, it's not going to be much different. Uh, however, it's going to be a camera that is mounted onto something else. And it's not going to be a photo camera, it's going to be a video camera. So, we are going to deal with one of these today. Um, this is a FPV drone. Now, an FPV drone, if you're not aware of or familiar with them, FPV drones are a drone that you fly using a first-person view. And what that means is, is that there is a camera built onto the drone that sends back a wireless video signal to headphones, or, wow, not headphones, but to a pair of goggles like this. And pretty much the way that it works is, you control this drone, or actually they're called quads if there's four propellers, um, with a radio controller, much like a much like a RC car or RC plane. You use a controller like this to control a FPV drone. Now, there are several different types of FPV drones out there. There are, like I was shown right here, this is what you would call a five inch FPV freestyle drone. This would be a I think this is a three and a half or three inch Cinewhoop. And as you can see with the Cinewhoop, the blades are protected. These you generally use when you're flying around people or you want to protect property, stuff like that, from your propellers to not damage them. And then there is long distance quads like this, which actually is not a quad. This is actually a hexacopter, as you can see by the six different uh, propellers on here and six different motors. Now, what makes these different than, let's say, your run-of-the-mill DJI camera drone? Well, camera drones like DJI, like a, a, a DJI Mini, or even the DJI FPV drone, um, they have a lot of automation to it. They have a lot of safety protocols built in. A lot of features that, if you let go of the sticks, and when I mean sticks, it's, you know, let go of the controller. Um, this would go from flying to just stop. And it'll just sit there and it'll, it'll float. And it'll be GPS locked in place and it's not going to go anywhere. And if you hit like return to home, it's going to turn around and it's going to land at the GPS coordinates that it, it programmed or it saved when it took off. Now, when you're talking these FPV drones, like, for instance, this right here, um, you don't really have those features. If you let go of the sticks on this thing, it's, it's going to take off and fly away, or it's going to crash and burn on the ground. Um, and that's, that's not a good thing. But you do have complete 100% control, and you have just an absolute ton of and I mean ton more power than you would out of, let's say, your DJI Mini 2s or 3s or your DJI whatever. You know, just the camera drones that everybody's just used to, the Mavics. Those take fantastic footage. They take fantastic photos, stuff like that. Well, these drones really don't take photos. Um, there is a camera built in on here, but that camera really isn't all that high quality. It's designed to simply send a signal, a video signal back to your back to your goggles so that you can see what's going on. And the reason you wear these goggles is that these things move so fast um, or they can move so fast that looking at it on your screen, on a small screen like your phone or, or even like an iPad mini, you're not going to be able to have enough time to react. Um, and that's part of the, the whole thing. And plus, it's actually kind of fun. It, it, it's very immersive wearing those goggles and, and, and you have full on 
almost 180 degree view of, of what you're seeing through the drone itself, through the quad itself, and it makes for a very fun flight. And it almost feels like you're flying. It's really, really slick. Now, there's different ways of flying. Like this, for instance, this is an, uh, a freestyle drone. This you flip and flop and you do all this crazy stuff with if you want to, or you can just take it and cruise with it. Me personally, I like to cruise. Uh, I'm more into video footage off of these than I am uh, doing freestyle flying. So now today I did get out and I did fly and I haven't flown in almost a year. Last time I flew was back in March of last year when I was in Maui. <laughs> time that I flew and the only reason I haven't flown is just because I've been busy and I haven't had time to get out there and actually fly. Uh, so today I got a chance to take out my hexacopter. Now this is what you would call a long range drone. This is designed to run with a lithium ion uh, battery not a lithium polymer like the more powerful drones do and a lithium ion it has less power to it but it allows for this to fly for a lot longer and a lot further because of the amount of time now on a five inch freestyle you generally only get i would say on average about five minutes of flight time this you can get about 25 depending on how you're flying and what the weight is and all that other stuff so when we're talking about a camera being mounted onto here i am going to mount the DJI Action 2 right on here like that just like so actually it'll be a little bit a little different setup on it um, and this is where I get my 4k video recording now it just so happens that when I flew this today like an idiot uh, I put it in the wrong setting um, I didn't record it properly and what I ended up doing was um, I got unstabilized footage and unstabilized footage, which I actually plan to do. I plan to get unstabilized footage off of this camera and then run it through a program called Gyroflow so that I can smooth it all out really nice. Well, I put it in the wrong settings and I didn't even get uh, the, the gyro data so I can stabilize it. So, um, being that it's been almost a year since I've flown and I completely biffed on, on the footage, it's not gonna be stabilized at all which really sucks but it's okay it's my first time flying in almost a year i guess some little mistakes are allowed to happen so let's go check out some of the footage here here we go here we go mm -hmm. and looks like i still got it i haven't forgot how to fly reason my GPS is it whatever. 
So I have, right now my GPS isn't locked on, it's, for whatever reason it's not running. Couldn't tell you. And where's my battery at? So you can see that you can do a lot of things that you can't do with your regular camera drone. I mean, look at this. Look at the view you're getting. And these are becoming more and more mainstream now. More oh, losing signal. Um, with like fly-throughs through like real estate mansions and commercials where they're like flying through. Um, if you watch Mr. Beast, he uses quite a bit of FPV in some of his videos where they're flying through things. Like if you watched one where they're on a, what is it, big old uh, cruise liner. Um, they were flying FPV drones through there for footage. One thing I love about using GPS on these is, is it'll, it'll remind you where you're at. However, for whatever reason, my GPS did not lock on, so I have no GPS data in this drone, which is annoying. Now, this one is not what I would call, this is not a, like a freestyle type of drone. I can still go up and do flips and stuff like that with it, but it's not, it's, it's not a freestyle drone. It's not designed for that. This is designed for cruising. Um, and what I really, really love about cruising is that you can get some really cool footage. I'm more about cool footage than I am about flipping and flopping my drone around everywhere. I, I, I don't really care about footage like that. I want to see cool stuff. I want like nice, cool, smooth flying and just experiencing some neat shit. So like right now, my delay from my fingers to what I'm seeing and back to me from my camera, from my drone, is 34 milliseconds. That's what the delay is. And to be honest with you, I move this thing right or left, it's instant in my in my glasses, in my goggles. It, it makes, there's really nothing that is, there's no delay to, to, to me. Now, if I'm sitting there and I'm racing and stuff like that and flying around, um, like poles and stuff like that, like they do in, in drone racing, yeah, I would probably notice the, the delay. And that's why digital really isn't mainstream for FUV racing. But, you know, you can get some cool footage like... <laughs> Ooh, I almost biffed it there. And this is this is thin ice here, so if I lose it out here, I'm not going out to get it. And that'll be four hundred dollars down the drain.
So I've been flying for over five minutes and I still have plenty of battery left. You know, when you think like five, well, five minutes is not a whole lot of flight. Actually, you, you can do a lot in five minutes. Five minutes is actually a lot of time. this one I could actually stretch it out to probably in this temperature I think it's 20 degrees out I can probably stretch this to about um, 15 probably another 10 more minutes 9 more minutes well this is me flying for the first time in a year almost um, I haven't really lost it muscle memory still still intact cool. Let's get this low. Next video, I am going to whip out my 5-inch freestyle and you'll be able to clearly see the difference in the power and the performance. Fun times. So, it would appear that my action camera, I guess it wasn't fully charged, uh, died off at some point, which kind of sucks. So I don't know how long, of a, how long it recorded for. Um, but here's another nice thing with the DJI action cam. It comes with this base, and if you notice, well, it depends on which depends on which model you get. Um, I got the one that has the, uh, you know, dual screen. So, what I do with this is I stick it on there. It's all mag magnetic, magnetized. And now it's going to actually charge, the base is actually going to charge the, the actual camera. Um, which is actually pretty nice. Nice little feature. Let me turn it on. I want to see what I got for... So here's the replay, as you see. Let's see, flying along the lake and coming in for a landing. Okay, so that was my first flight and after a year. Um, and I, I use the DJI Action too. I, I do have GoPros and stuff like that. And while I find that the GoPro is a little bit better quality in some aspects, um, like low light and stuff like that. I never fly in the light, so I don't need a big old GoPro. And some of the GoPros that I have, I actually decased and, and turned into, um, like what they call a naked GoPro. And then GoPro actually came out, I think with 11, um, they came out with the, was it the GoPro mini or something like that? And it's a lot lighter and it's really designed for like FPV and stuff like that. But you know, to be honest with you, I, I don't need it. I, I have this little guy right here, which actually works fantastic. Um, it does 4K 120. 4K 120 out of this little guy right here. Now, the battery life on it is not the greatest off of just this right here. Um, I think I, I generally, on a full charge, I, I mean, I'll get a good um, 15 minutes out of it, more than likely, most likely. Um, maybe a little bit longer it depends on the settings that you have in the camera itself now uh normally i run 4k uh normally i'll do like 4k four to three ratio not a 16 by nine four to three has the same width but it gives you more more video on the top and it's normally what i run today though unfortunately because i'm just an idiot um i ran it in super wide i ran it in 4k 60 and i ran it at uh 16 by 9 so that the top and bottom is cropped so that's uh that's the reason why that i don't have any gyro data if i would have ran it in a four to three ratio 
at 60 FPS in 4K, I would have been able to have gyro data. Um, and that's just how this, this works. Now, I could have simply switched it over to Rocksteady. Rocksteady is the built-in stabilizer that works on here. And honestly, it works pretty good. The, the footage that you saw from Maui that was running in Rocksteady because they didn't allow gyro data at the time so that I could gyro stabilize it with a program called Gyroflow. Um, so it, it actually isn't bad. There's sometimes there's a little bit of a jerk to it um, when you're using Rocksteady, but for the most part, I would say 90% of the time it runs perfect and, and you don't even need to bother with uh, using an extra program in order to make it look right. Um, yeah, I mean, this has a bunch of attachments to it. The, mag the magnetic clip and snap is actually really really nice i really really enjoy how the base of it you can i have a 256 uh, gig uh, sd card that i put in here and i simply transfer the data over from here to here now if i was running this in i think like 4k 60 just regular 4k 60 i think i'd get a little bit longer i think you get about 24 minutes out of it uh, on a charge so uh, it, I guess it just depends on the settings for how long it'll actually last. But yeah, um, you know, if you want a nice little action cam, this this is a fantastic little unit to use. I will, like, if, I, if I'm doing, like, some of my um, POV uh, shots with a camera, like, or I'm walking around town and I'm taking photos, I'm using this, and I'm actually using it with a necklace. It actually hangs right on, right on my chest right here. And it sits there perfectly, and it does a wonderful job, and it takes wonderful video. And actually, the audio on it sounds really, really good. So, you know, it's a good choice. It's a good choice to have. If you want the best quality out of an action cam, then you're definitely going to want a GoPro. Now, the quality difference really is, I'm going to tell you, most people won't even notice the difference. I'm going to say 99% of the people out there will never notice a difference between the quality on this, the 4K quality on this, and a 4K quality on, like, a GoPro Hero, what, 11 or 12. You can get a very, very versatile, lightweight, really tough camera for, I think, I think the price of these are actually a little bit less than the GoPro. So, if you see one and you need one, grab it. It's actually a pretty handy-dandy little camera. Now, I'm going to do another video on this and it's going to be on my five inch quad which is this one right here now this is a powerhouse of a quad it's flippy floppy it flips around everywhere um it's really really well built and it also i gotta say that i also build these myself i, I don't really well okay let me let me rephrase that this one originally, the one I just flew today, um, I bought pre-made. And, but then I tore it apart and I rebuilt it all because I had a electronic speed controller go out. So then I had to tear it all apart and rebuild everything and put all new components in it. So yes, I bought it pre-built, but I also built it too at the same time. And that's another really cool thing about FPV is that it's a fun hobby to get into. It can be expensive, but that's any hobby out there. But it's also extremely rewarding to get out there and fly. Now, being that FPV is a lot different than flying your standard regular type of camera drone, they do have simulators out there that you can actually tie your uh, radio controller into and actually fly it and get a lot of practice uh, there's some you can even uh, connect right to your goggles and, and fly like if, for instance if you get the dji fpv that's inexpensive a, not inexpensive but a expensive way to get into the hobby with something that that will help you learn how to fly a fpv quad or hexacopter and one nice thing about it is that their simulator actually runs off of like your phone. You plug your phone into your goggles, you put the goggles on, you grab your radio, and you sit there and you actually fly in the, the simulator. And it actually works pretty good. It's not bad, but there's other options out there. Some are free, some are very, very inexpensive.
and you can get into the hobby that way and get your stick time and figure out how to fly and get that muscle memory that you need but anyway this is matt ryan and i am signing off because it is late and i need to finish editing this video and go to work early in the morning um but yeah it's my video with fpv drones and a dji osmo action 2. so hit the like hit the subscribe and i'll see you in the next video